does the Pixel 5a even really need a review? This phone is kind of perfectly boring and understood. It's sort of perfect for its time. The upfront disclosure, I'm on hashtag Team Pixel. I received this phone a couple days ago, and I've recently done some consulting and paid hosting work with the Google hardware team during the Pixel Buds A-Series launch. There's been no influence or direct interaction on this video, but I feel that's worth sharing for folks to fully understand where I'm coming from, because the Pixel 5a is not a phone for me. Right now, I'm critically excited about the phones that aren't really for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited about the phones which are for me, but let's acknowledge those are the really, <laughs> really niche phones, not the phones we should be casually recommending to the mainstream. But I digress. The Pixel 5a isn't exciting, and I'm excited about that. And I get how this is going to sound a bit apologist to diehard smartphone enthusiasts. But we need competitive phones in the mainstream space. Here's a little exercise I'd like you to try. Go to your family and friends and ask them point blank. Do you need a fancier screen or more powerful internals or do you want more battery life? Don't guide the question. Don't explain the question. And don't get offended when they answer. I just want you to listen. Because we've been promoting and hyping premium tier products and high performance gadgets, but we've done a miserable job of educating consumers on what they can do with more compute power. So yeah, average consumers are going to roll their eyes at us when we complain about a mid-ranger processor. I read the specs and this is underpowered. My family is pretty nerdy. It's a bunch of engineers and computer scientists and teachers, but they're not like me, where I genuinely want to try and replace laptop grade use with a phone. I personally enjoy comparing tech products like, like how we talk about cars. There's a smaller market of folks who want a really fancy hot rod. There are people who need the functionality of a diesel truck. And the vast majority of consumers are commuting in commuter hatchbacks and sedans. The math on this is pretty easy. A larger gas tank and a fuel efficient engine is a very successful combo, especially in the markets Google is focusing on, North America and Japan, there is a premium to be paid for the Pixel 5a, but I don't find much lacking from the phone that will turn out to be a deal breaker for the targeted consumers. It is fair to ask though, where are we putting our money on this phone? And I would say optimization and refinement. Google's promise on Pixel phones is largely on software and services. And one of the points which I think is starting to break through how phones are updated and how new software features are delivered. Pixels should carry the reputation that a phone from Google is the place to go for up-to-date and bleeding edge Google services. Software support costs money to a degree. I think it's fair you know, to say things like we shouldn't buy phones for what they might do in the future. But as reviewers, we move those goalposts around a lot, like when we need to make a specific point. When folks say things like iPhones have great software support, we're kind of advocating that you could buy an iPhone for the potential of what it might do in the future based on that software support. In the Android space, I feel Google has done a reasonably good job of living up to those expectations. There's no guarantee all the updates will bring features you care about, but that is what you're paying for on a Pixel. From there, I kind of feel the rest is academic. I can read the specs at you, but I'd rather you just go to GSM Arena and support the amazing work that those reviewers and content creators produce. If the only contribution to a conversation on a phone is talking about RAM and SOC, then again, I think you're likely missing the point on a lot of mid-ranger phones. It used to be painful using a mid-tier CPU, but that's not the case today. I'm only a couple days in, but the phone's working for me. These refinements are working for me. This is a Pixel 4a 5G with better weather resistance and a larger battery. Like, I feel that's pretty easy. Oh, Google can focus on a core user experience. The camera is still great. The phone courageously has a headphone jack and it's arriving at a reasonable price. It's familiar in all the key areas consumers might care about, 
with some quality of life perks. And let's be frank, if consumers, not techies, not, not enthusiasts, but consumers really cared about revolutionary excitement every phone generation, iPhones would not sell nearly as well as they currently do. So I'm taking this phone for a spin. I shot, edited, and rendered this 4K video on the Pixel 5a. I've got it set up on a tripod. I'm using my little Rode Wireless Go for the audio, which is sort of clumsily uh, attached to the side of the phone through the headphone jack. And I had to finish this video off 4K 30 because this SoC doesn't really support 60 frame per second rendering on PowerDirector. That being said, are you trying to produce 4K walk and talk vlogs from your phone? Are your performance needs that high? Because if not, then I think you're gonna be fine here. And as more consumers vote with their wallets, maybe it can be okay for someone to trade more compute power for a lot more runtime out in the field. This thing is going to be a battery life monster. I think that's a feature more average consumers would prefer. Probably just as good a spot to put a pin in this. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm just sharing some thoughts on this new phone. I'm kind of digging it. I, I wanted to do something a little different than just sort of a normal first impressions or doing a specs read or, you know, it feels really nice in the hand. So I'll follow up soon with some more camera and audio testing. But the exciting thing for me about this phone, I think it's gonna be pretty easy to predict what it's capable of. I'll of course leave some links down below this video where you can find more info on the Pixel 5a and also check out some of the work from the content creators in hashtag Team Pixel as they're tearing into cameras and audio and all that fun stuff. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, and supporting your favorite content creators like all those folks on Team Pixel, never more critical than it's been today. So I greatly appreciate those of you, you're checking out links, you're, you're maybe shopping a little merch, that kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. Full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals on the internet, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.